Hello everybody, this is Henri Batouflet from the AXBLUE support team. Welcome to the session 3 of our video series, How to prepare the INS DVL. In this set of video, we'll show you how to make the DVL INS calibration. So I'm, I will take this kit here that I just assembled and configured, and I'll put it on this mock-up boat here, on a tiny pole on the side, and we'll make the DVL calibration at sea. We will have four simple steps. First will be to overview the INS DVL calibration. Second will explain you the purpose. In the third, we'll perform a step-by-step -step procedures to show you exactly what you would see on a live unit. And in a fourth part, we'll do verification and finish with pro tips. For the overview of the calibration, the purpose is to have a calibration length that is at least a thousand times your positioning accuracy of the position sensor. So for example, with a differential GNSS, I'll we'll have to run a five kilometer line. With an RTK grade GPS, I would have to run a one kilometer line. It would be ab about similar while underwater. The important thing to consider when budgeting your trajectories is to think that we'll count everything from a point A to a point B as the maximum range. Should you travel in between, there will be no issue. Uh, regardless, we recommend a two-node speed. Faster would be better, but speed would be constant. Now, we'll review together the purpose of the calibration. The purpose of the calibration would be to compute two things, an angular error and a scale factor error. And that is what I will show you on this table here. This is my start point. This is my real trajectory endpoint. And here, it's my measured trajectory endpoint. So basically, what you see here is this blue line here. And what you see here is the red line. So now I'm ready to perform the DVL calibration with a step-by-step -step procedure that will consist of first setting to work the full kit. So I will perform the first step, which is the calibration non-status. I do a simple initial alignment of my INS. So ideally here, I'll travel in H-shape pattern or in, in stair shape pattern. The idea is to converge my Rovins Nano heading standard deviation below 0 0.1 degree second of latitude. The second step, once I'm done with an, a good initial alignment, is to go at the beginning of my calibration line that will be here on the table. You remember my real trajectory is this line, while my measured trajectory is this line here. So I'm ready to start, and I do a step that is called the calibration course. The calibration course will be very fast because prior to that, I did a very good alignment in my step one. And I continue to travel this line. So in the real trajectory, I will be here, while in the measure trajectory, I will go there. And so I continue up to the calibration fine value when my values stabilize. And I will reach the end of this line, that's when I know my calibration is finished. The calibration is finished on three criteriums. My heading misalignment standard deviation is below 0 0.1. My pitch misalignment standard deviation is below 0 0.15 degrees. And my scale factor standard deviation is below 0 0.1 percent. That is for a Rovins Nano coupled with a DVL. Then I can click on stop calibration. So now I will show you again those steps, but with real data. This is data uh, I screen capture while uh, on a calibration on the sea surface with a Rovins Nano and a Nortec DVL 1000 like we have here. So I go back to the start of my calibration line, and here we'll see uh, visually what happens. So before the calibration, my parameters are not moving, and they are as when I'm I set them in the previous video session. Now I click on start calibration and it will do very quickly the rough calibration and turn to the fine calibration. So here on the fine calibration, I can see that I'm 57 meter into the calibration pattern and I have data 
which is very inaccurate. It's those values are moving a lot, as well as the standard deviation associated to them. And it will converge over time as I go towards the end of the calibration. So my value will stabilize and stabilize and eventually turn blue. When they turn blue, that's when I reach here this, this virtual point, but my real uh, trajectory is not the measured one. The measured one is actually here. And that's how I'm able to compute angular value, scale factor value, and of course, pitch error value. Here, because I went under the criterions I gave you earlier, everything is turning blue, so that's when I know to stop the calibration. Actually, I could continue to, to do this calibration thing, and even if I stop calibration or continue, the value will refresh and get better into the algorithm. So now I click on stop calibration, and I can implement this angular error here that I computed, and also this scale factor here that I computed. And so my real trajectory will be back to here. I have a very nice feature inside the MMI. I click on update parameters, and all those parameters I just compute will be saved into memory. Next step will be to do the verification. So to towards the verification, I'll restart my system. Everything is recycled on power, and I start again on the same trajectory pattern, or a new one if I like, and I do again this calibration line. This time, I will expect my real trajectory and my measured trajectory to be compensated from this initial error I seek to find during the calibration procedure. So I start again, but it's much more simple. I have this verification feature inside the MMI. I click on Start Verification. I run my same line or another one, and I go toward the end of it. So as I start this value, it is on a zero value, and soon, 53 meters again into the calibration line, I can measure an error, horizontal error, horizontal drift, vertical error, and vertical drift of the calibration results. And as I continue towards my line, those, those error values will get much and much better. And when I reach the end of this calibration line, about the same uh, length that the original calibration line, here I did uh, a little bit more than a thousand meters, those values will stabilize and give me a very accurate result. For so for example, here it's a real set dat of data on this Rovins Nano DVL kit, and I have an error of about 0.01% of the travel distance horizontally and 0.017% of the travel distance vertically. I know I did a good calibration, so I can continue at sea, and now my INS DVL kit is ready. I have a bunch of pro tips to show you, uh, to detail you, uh, in order to improve or get the most of these calibration procedures. Longer lines are usually better. I know sometimes it's a constraint uh, at sea to run longer line, but like I said, even if you continue, after you're, you're reaching those blue values, it will greatly improve your calibration performance. Uh, the initial alignment is very important. That is one of the main elements that will impact your calibration resu result. So having the ability to perform this figure eight pattern at sea or stair shape will greatly improve your ability to do this calibration line and also the time it will take to get those blue values. So with a better initial alignment, you might reach a better uh, end performance result. If the calibration values or the SD is obviously wrong about, let's say, 500 meters into the calibration line, eventually something is wrong in your setup. So I strongly recommend to stop the calibration at once to come back to the beginning of your line and to figure out what could be wrong in your settings. Most of the times, uh, it could be about the sensor integrations, the lever arm of the GPS reference position, or things like that. 
the less motion of the ocean there is, the better it is. So of course you plan your calibration day when it's nice and sunny outside, so that while at sea you have a more smooth trajectory. Um, a second calibration run is not necessarily necessary, uh, but I would advise sometimes if you have any doubt, you just have to run a second calibration run, starting from the previously computed value. So you would see if you stick to those values or if those values change again. It would indicate sometimes you have to uh, restart the DVL calibration. Of course, um, if you know there is uh, strong currents in your location, the use of an SVP uh, ascent velocity profiler is more than advised because it will compensate the beams of the DVLs. So to finish this video, um, I'd like to remind you that uh, we have a lot of benefits with these calibration procedures. It's very easy in the end to calibrate. You, you see, I show you based on real data here with this mock-up. Uh, what you will experience on the field is about the same. Once you did the calibration procedure once, it's, it's a matter of a few hours in between getting the kit off the box and getting it calibrated. The procedure is fairly simple. It's deeply documented in the accompanying documentation of the Rovins, but you can also just use the web MMI and follow the color codes and instructions in it. Uh, the MMI visual will give you a lot of feedback, uh, so you know live if your data is, is good or less good, and you can actually impact directly your choice for the calibration. Of course, we have small features to make it simple, like the safe calibration values that prevent you to, to go back in another menu and change the settings. Thanks for watching this video. In the last session, I will show you a bunch of extras, things that I could not tell you during the first three video sessions. Thank you for watching this.